Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you all yet again another Vikings episode review right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. And as always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Vikings episode review. And this is my review of Season 1, Episode 7, entitled A King's Ransom. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. Explicit language coming. Holy fucking hell. Explicit language over. No, seriously though, this week's episode I think is a major contender for best episode of the season. Just because of all the events that occurred in this week's episode, what they managed to do with the characters, the interesting things that they managed to set up with the character interaction, and because we got the most epic fight out of the entire season in this episode, the whole thing was phenomenal. Just wow. So, things I want to talk about. First off, I want to discuss Ragnar's latest campaign into Northumberland. Now, I like how just 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 off top, just straight out the gun, like what they're doing with the relationship that they're developing between Ragnar and King Ayla. And I'm pronouncing it like that because that's how they pronounce it in the show, King Ayla. I like how they're doing it and I like I, I, I liked how they introduced him I, and, and I just like his characterization throughout this entire episode because what they managed to do with King Ayla is what I was saying I wish they would have done with Earl Harrelson and that is to have Ragnar's adversary not be a villain. And let's be real here, King Ella, technically speaking, is not a villain. He is the king of Northumberland, he is defending his land against an enemy horde, he's doing what's expected of him and what, what his people would expect of him, but he is not a villain. He is not a bad guy, and technically speaking, comparatively speaking, you could say that Ragnar would actually be the villain in the, if you were going to label those two if, if if it had to be absolute labels attached to both ragnar and king ella i think that ragnar technically speaking would be more of the villain right but anyway i like how they're doing that and and this is what i wanted to see this is what i wanted with earl haroldson and, and and once again to reiterate my thoughts on earl haroldson's character from one of my earlier reviews when they started making him out to be more of a villain i i wasn't really digging it an opposing force yes an antagonist yes but not necessarily a villain and i, I i'm liking what they're doing with these two because Here's the thing, what happens is when you, when you are able to create a protagonist and an antagonist who necessarily aren't, uh, what's the term I'm looking for, where their moral compass is still relatively in check, when they don't really go outside um, or they don't really cross any lines, and let's, and let's be fair, in this episode, neither one of them really crossed any lines. Now, yeah, of course, you can say that King Ella, you know, oh, well, he broke the, uh, you know, he didn't keep up his end of the bargain. He didn't keep up his end of the deal. He tried to screw Ragnar and them out and send him an army after him. Yeah. However, though, if you were the king of a country that was being invaded, what would you have done? Especially if you thought that you could take out the horde and still rescue your brother? What would you have done? You see what I'm saying? I don't blame him. I don't fault him at all for taking um for taking that maneuver because from from you know the perspective of the chess game, it was actually a pretty good move. Now yeah, it backfired, but it was still a pretty sound move. Um and also they kind of they foreshadowed that anyway when when King Ella made the comment that, oh, well, I'll need, you know, it will take some time for me to go and re uh, require forces from, you know, from elsewhere, from outside the kingdom to fight along our side. And then, of course, when he made the deal with Ragnar, he said, well, it's going to take me some time to get that money together. I knew what he, that he was, you know, trying to build up his uh, his forces. So all in all, 
my final thoughts on those two characters and the way they are, they're setting up their rivalry, I thought was perfect. Pitch perfect, and yeah, now they really are rivals. Before they were just men, two men on opposite ends of the chessboard. Now they're like enemies for life. Or at least Ragnar is um, Ella's, uh, a Ayla's uh, enemy for life. Thought that was great. Thought that was great. Um, I also like how both he and his brother Ethelwolf were, um, how they were introduced and, and, rep and uh, presented at the beginning of the episode. They were presented as pretty likable characters, especially Ethelwolf. You know, he was the one cracking all the jokes and whatnot. I mean, they were, I, I like how they did that. I like how they did that. All right, now I want to talk about Rolo, and then I want to talk about Floki, because what they set up between those two characters, I thought was fantastic. Now, Rolo, see, I still can't get, I still can't get a handle on this character. I can't get inside his head. I don't know what's going on up there, and I don't know why he's doing some of the things he's doing. But like when Rolo, you know, uh, volunteer to be baptized that came out of the blue i didn't expect it at all but floki's reaction to it and this idea that you know yes rollo um renounced his gods and that's going to bring about the wrath of the gods and then of course look at what happened after floki and rollo had that exchange we had the attack on the camp right we went back to uh, Scandinavia and freaking uh, Lygatha lost her child. So I like how they did that because it really is giving this sense like, oh no, um, ill has befallen them, you know? Um, and, and then I also like how what Rolo's reaction to it because after the battle, you know, Rolo went ahead and killed everything that moved and he told Floki, he was like, oh, do you think Odin will still be angry at me? Look how many Christians I killed and Rolo claims that he did it as a joke but of course, you know, we know Floki and his connection to the gods and he doesn't play that but what I'm saying is I like how it wasn't just somewhat of I like how their exchange wasn't empty threats you see what I'm saying? That this idea that, okay, yes, Floki was, um, he was offended by Rolo's actions, right? But then when he went ahead and let Rolo know about it, that it got in Rolo's head. It bothered him. It poked at his guilt, at his conscience. And then Rolo felt like he had to actually prove that he was still on their side. So I, I, I like how that happened. And I, I wasn't expecting Rolo's vol volunteering himself, number one. But then I definitely wasn't expecting that argument to actually provoke Rolo into that type of emotional reaction. And I thought that, that just speaks channels about Rolo. And it really does make him into a much more interesting character. And I've, I've been saying it, I think, since episode four. I th yeah, since the trial, since the trial, I've been saying it. Rolo is not a two-dimensional character anymore. They are really doing a lot of interesting things with his character. And I think because of that, that's why it's so hard to get a grasp on the guy. You really don't know what's going on up there. You really don't. Um, all right, now let's talk about the women in this week's episode, which I thought that man... You, you know, the thing was, you remember in my review last week when I was talking about, you know, the reign of Earl Ragnar, like all, all of these things that will happen. I don't think I, it just didn't occur to me. It's like, oh yeah, Ragnar, you know, he's going on another, um, he, you know, he's going on another raid. And I never realized that, yeah, Ligatha would be ruling in his stead. And I think part of that, to be honest though, part of that, um, came from my impression that Lagatha was actually with him this time around. I, I, like, when we saw the raid and we knew, like, because it was during the summer and whatnot, like, we've had, I think we've had somewhat of a time skip, certainly enough for Ragnar to heal, but I was under the impression that the time skip actually um, was longer, where, like, Lagatha already had the child 
and that she was joining them on this raid. That's what I was under the impression of until I saw this episode. And so the thing was, the, the, the idea that Lagatha would be the one ruling in Ragnar's, I never even thought about that. But then when we saw it, what can I, what more can I say about her character? Like, Jesus Christ, this woman, hand, okay, first off, I already mentioned it before, one of my favorite characters, hands, probably my second favorite character in the entire series, but man, you're talking about a character that does embody the warrior, um, the warrior class, and that, 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 uh, that honorable warrior type um, image and and persona in their culture, but also, man, she's the house, she's wife, housekeeper, mother, and I would even say um, humanitarian wouldn't be the right word, but like just the idea that you know this woman, you know, could could be a freaking like battle ready shield maiden on one hand and then this caring figure on the other hand it's like man that whole that first scene with her um about the uh the couple where the husband was talking about how he suspected that his wife cheated on him and whatnot like it it may it does make sense that Lagatha would be more sympathetic towards um, towards the woman, towards the wife in that case. Also, because the one thing I love the most about Lagatha's character is her ability to put herself in the other person's shoes. And I think that's what really allowed her to sympathize with the wife because she's looking at it from, per from the perspective of, okay, well, what was that? What if that was me? And she did the exact same fucking thing in the scene when Siggy showed up. And when Bjorn, you remember, he was the hesitant one. He was like, whoa, I don't feel comfortable about this. You know, her husband tried to kill my dad. And what did Lydatha say? She says, if things had been different, I would have been exactly where she is right now. That speaks so many channels, so many volumes about her character. And I loved every fucking second of it thought it was great and that's why when we did get that final scene after she lost the child man that i was like because she, her she does not deserve that that the fact that 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 uh that that befell her was really unfair and i'm like man 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 also my thoughts on Siggy and her proposal, you know, going before Lagatha talking about she wants to serve her. <sighs> See, this is what's so weird. When that scene happened, I was like, oh, I don't know. I was with Bjorn. I was like, whoa, I don't know about that. Because, you know, I I'm still I'm still working with the idea that she can't be trusted. But then the way she ran to Lagatha's side at the end of the episode was like, wait a minute now. Maybe. You know, maybe I'm putting the, the, the cart before the horse. Maybe, you know, maybe she actually does have um, um, good intentions. You know, maybe she's not plotting behind her back or anything like that. Whew. But I got to tell you, man, her and Rolo, Siggy and Rolo, because I, I keep going back to that scene from last week's episode, and I don't know how to make sense of that. So, whoo, man damn good fucking episode man i'm telling you and like i said i would i would i would go as to far as i would go so far as to say this is probably one of definitely one of the best if not the best episode so far so whew, really good job with that really good job with that so anyway um oh yeah and, oh man i'm gonna have some stuff to talk about next week haven't seen the preview and what's going on with brother Ethelston? Man, we're going to have some shit to speak about next week. Woo! Anywho, so that's my timer. That's going to do it for my review this week. I want to thank you all for joining me again this week in the comments below. Please let me know your thoughts on this week's episode. And please let me know what you guys are thinking. Having seen that preview for next week, man. Oh, man. 
And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief, signing off. And until next time, peace.